you don't want to bring a Bowie knife because then people are going to think you're some kind of a murderer or something. But bring in some kind of a heavy tool or just a stick you find. Something you can club a wild animal that might attack you with. That kind of thing. Oh my god. Oh my god. Whew. I'm gonna lose so much weight. Not that I have a lot of weight on me to begin with. Um, see? But it's good. It's good. This is the nursery. Okay, so this is gonna cost us the pace. But that's fine. I'm not trying to kill myself out here. I still have other running I've planned today. Okay, so yeah, we're we're at 10 right now because I'm walking, and this is four miles in. I just want to take it casually, uh, walk through here a little bit, and then maybe I'll pick it up again in a bit. Anyways, it's uh, good, good exercise. Great exercise. So, this entrance here wasn't there the last time I did this loop. This whole thing wasn't there. This was just like this farm. They bought it from the farm. Anyway, there was a fence here. And I get here, remember, I ran this thing at night, I was telling you earlier fence is close and it's got barbed wire over the top I jumped a barbed wire fence yeah I even cut my stomach a little bit and left a scar for about a year but it wasn't terrible it wasn't like a deep cut uh, there was fortunately for me a bush next to it so I crawled onto the bush and used that to shimmy over the barbed wire fence but um it was wild how can I say I'm I'm a wild child Oh, this is beautiful. They've done a great job out here. You know? These are some nice looking apartments. I wonder what they go for. Um, these, I don't know if they're apartments or they're duplexes. Hmm. Alright, here we go. Let's just read the signs. Fetch parcel service. When they offer you all kinds of this stuff, it means it's going to be way overpriced. Right? Car care center? Beer garden? Tech cafe? Yeah, the uh, luxury apartments. I don't know, man. Like, I'm a handyman. I do all that stuff. I'm the type of guy they'd hire to manage this kind of ground. I'm not saying I'm applying or anything. Although that would be an interesting idea. But um, by the looks of it, they have this whole thing under control and already worked out. Anyways, what I'm saying is that kind of stuff, I wouldn't pay extra for it because I could just do it myself. I'm from, uh, I, to, not to be too cynical, but when you have an all-in-one experience, Ultra Lux, zero entry pool, private cabanas, I don't know. It's just like, I feel like you're going to end up paying through the nose. Like, you're probably going to pay a lot more than if you were to just to take care of those things yourself. Alright. Yeah, I used to live down there. Yeah, cool, good times. We still also uh, manage a bunch of the properties, just like for landscaping and stuff like that. Anyway, I'm just gonna take it easy, walk through here, 
and then uh, after we get past this development I'm gonna jog the rest of the way back <sighs> doing good So uh, along this fence line and down there were my common jogging routes. Now this is a uh, private development so um, I, I have friends down there, people like old clients and so forth, but I don't want to like disturb anyone so I'm just going to stick to completing the loop here right now and then afterwards I'm going to go check out some other places. Anyways. I'm having fun. Not seeing many lizards though. I'm seeing signs of their presence, but I'm not seeing them. Like right now, you would think that some of them would be out on sitting on the fence, but I'm, yeah, just not seeing any lizard activity. I don't know, it's possible the population drops in the winter and then it rebounds again in the spring. There we go. That's a lizard sound. Hear that? Oh, that's a bird. Well, now we know where the lizards went. Now, I'm sure there's still plenty of them. Um, the density of the lizard population is usually such that they're not going to really, and even though birds might eat some of them, they're going to be fine in terms of the population as a whole. I mean, uh, it's sad that the individuals get it eaten, but such is the way of nature. That sounds like a lizard. There it is, right there. It's a brown anole. Um, that looks like a female, or it could be a juvenile male. Yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah, uh, I had to show you one, you know. I wanted you to see one for yourself. But yeah, I love it out here. It's warm and there's palm trees and lizards. It's awesome. And we didn't get eaten by an alligator or a bobcat today. So, hey, props to us. Anyways, I hope you guys are enjoying this vacation slash running with Oleg video leave a comment and tell me what you think I mean I'm not one to like chase an audience or so forth partially because I'm just too variable I change way too much as an individual to maintain a consistent audience but yeah this place is great Oh, what a beautiful magnolia. Alright, let's see, check our pace. Yeah, last other minute on it. And we're at four and a half miles though. So, at least we got that. Um, but I'm not in a rush, you know, it's like, I have this thing I want to describe, 
Let me just wait for this plane to pass and you'll understand. Like, I fundamentally, I don't fear death. Like, I don't like the idea of dying, because that sounds unpleasant. But my understanding of reality is that every moment that I have ever experienced, or will ever experience, is uh, kind of in its own frame of reference. It continues to exist. And this comes from science, essentially. There is no now moment that could be applied to the whole universe. It's um, this causality, cause and effect, but there's no now where now is real and five minutes ago was before and five minutes from now will be the future. It doesn't really exist. Instead, every moment is its own frame of reference. Like you put two twins born at the same time, right? Or whatever. Uh, but basically, identical twins, put one on a rocket, send him out in space, leave one on Earth. He comes back a year later. He's gonna be younger by like, uh, I don't know, like a second or maybe a fraction of a second. This isn't like something that necessarily can be proven. I mean, just the very fact that our satellites have to be adjusted for the difference in their clocks. Um, anyways, what I'm saying is that I continue to exist in the past. For me, the past isn't gone. It is real and it continues to play out. Each moment, its own frame of reference. So in that sense, like, when I visit these places, I don't visit them necessarily as the past. For me, the past is active and I enjoy walking through them, even if I'm not a part of them anymore. The me that was there continues to play them out and I've had a good life. It's like right now I'm visiting Florida, had a great life here and building new experiences here now also. I have a great life in Pennsylvania. Uh, I had a great life in Illinois and all the other states I've lived in Washington and so forth. So, like, when I visit my old haunts, places I used to go, it's kind of like taking a step into the past, but at the same time, it's a living past for me. Anyway, um, I know some of this might not make sense. I'm not an individual and necessarily makes too much sense. God, this is fun. Okay. I don't know, maybe 10 years in Pennsylvania, maybe more, maybe less. Hard to tell. I don't really set plans just because my life is too variable. Uh, like I have, I have short-term plans, but long-term, I have no idea what's going to happen. Anytime I try to predict a long-term future, I always got it. Not just wrong, but like way, way, way off base. So, I take it as it comes. Try to enjoy life. Like I said in my previous stream, the idea that you're around and then you're not anymore and that you would want to live something like normal, it's just kind of absurd to me. Like for me, I have to go out there, I have to explore and do everything, see everything and so forth. I mean, I have favorite places, of course, like this being one of them, but what I'm saying is that I don't necessarily crave stability. I crave vitality and experience. But at the same time, knowing how my life is topsy-turvy, I'm constantly trying to sharpen my skills. Like, education, so important, you know? Learn a trade, it's incredibly important. You know, like, you have to do things that are valuable to society, to community as a whole, and then you're always going to be in demand. You know, you do a good job, you do something that's useful and needed, you're going to have all the money that you want. I'm just saying. And then you can go out and have vacations. Okay, now that's a male right there. Now look, see what he's doing there? He's, actually, that might be a female. i got to get up close. Ah, I couldn't tell fast enough. Um, the males are a little... I would say gruffer looking, you know, they're more aggressive and the females are more softer and streamlined.
but with the juveniles you can't really tell I mean you can but not from just like eyeballing them you'd have to look at them up close Another little bird. No, it's not a lizard. But there's lizards around in the bushes. Yeah, I hear the little twitching sounds. And that's them reacting to my presence. There's one. Yep, darted around the fence. That looked big enough to be a male. These are all brown and olive. We haven't seen a green one yet. The green ones can turn brown. Um, and the brown ones, they can range from black to like gray to uh, brown, of course. Black, gray, and brown. But they can't do green. They can change colors. It's based on... Uh, mood, I guess, and temperature, and so forth. Okay, that's that's a male. Look how big he is. Look at the stripes. So cool. Hey, buddy. We're not gonna bother you. We're just looking at you. All right, we're leaving. Now, as soon as I turn around, he's gonna dart because. Oh, unless I step away far enough to where he no longer thinks I can go after him. Yeah, he's decided to chill out. Okay. Listen to that sound. Sounds like cicadas, maybe, or crickets. The lushness, I just love the lushness out here. All right, so from here, we're gonna complete the last part by jogging. I'm gonna get back to Magnolia Park. So right now we're at 11.57 and we've we jogged about three miles, not three miles, it was almost four miles of jogging and then um, we did walking the rest. So from here on out we're going to get back to jogging. You can also see hawks out here. Looks like we got gophers. That's right. There's all kinds of moles out here too. Like I said, the vibrance of life out here. Look at that, what are oranges? Some kind of fruit, maybe a lemon.
Uh, unfortunately, there is trash out here. It's crazy. Okay, so now this is where we started the job. Well, not, not actually started here, but this completes a loop, but I'm not stopping the time. I'm gonna take it all the way back to Magnolia Park.
Well, that's the University of Florida.